This is a painting that I did recently for a friend. And the way it started was he and his wife purchased a new home last year. And he asked if I would create a piece of art for it. And he suggested, I've got this one picture that I took when I used to uh, go to school down in southeastern Kansas. I always saw this tree out in the field. It became a, a standard part of my trip. And he asked, can you take that and use it as a beginning, but do whatever you want to do with it? it. And this was the final image that I came up with. So what I thought I would do is go through the process that I went through in order to arrive at this picture. So I'm going to just basically do a little slideshow here and talk about how I did what I did to get this final image. This is the original image that he gave me and it's what I had to start with. I knew in my mind how I wanted to approach this. So I ended up breaking it down in a number of different ways that I'll go through here with you. First thing I did was I extracted a high contrast version of the image so that I ended up with basically just black and white and I went in and I removed everything that was not important to what I wanted to do which was basically adjust and manipulate the foreground where the roadside grasses were along with the fence and then in the uh, background the single tree. After I captured that I edited it down to this so I had exactly the parts that I knew I was going to want to work with. Everything else was going to uh, be replaced one way or another. This is how I created the background. I eliminated everything other than I knew the area where I wanted this field to go and I went ahead and painted it. Now this is not the exact one that you'll see used because I didn't record it when I made it, but that just gives you an idea of how I use the emergence brushes in order to create this rather abstracted version of the field that I knew I was gonna wanna replace. So there's the actual one that I ended up creating when I did this. The next thing I wanted to do was adjust and replace the original sky. Now I liked the arrangement of the clouds so I wasn't looking to completely create those from scratch. The app I used to get it to have the watercolor look is an app on iOS called Waterlog. It's by Ten Rocket. John Balistrieri is the uh, engineer that wrote this and he does a really good job of being able to just with a press of a button get a very nice watercolor simulation. So that's what I used for the sky. Then I went ahead and I put the high contrast foreground and tree back into the image. So the next thing I did is I went ahead and put in the barbed wire and then I locked down the transparency of the high contrast foreground and tree so that I could paint into that. And that's how I started adding some color into it. Then I painted on a new layer and started adding some flowers and additional detail in the area of the foreground. Then I went ahead and I painted in the tree. At this point, I thought the sky was a little bit too clean and I wanted to rough it up so it matched the appearance of the foreground. So I just went in with a white pencil and went in and just kind of dirtied it up and added some hand rendered strokes to, again, kind of give this a dirtied up appearance. I wasn't looking for a very clean image. Now what you're seeing here is a layer I have that I use to apply noise to the image overall. This one has the look of what I think of as kind of a watery watercolor base look. And when I apply this, it's not on a black background, but on transparency. And I can go ahead and use that noise to apply it overall to the image. Here's the image before, and then there's the image with it applied. You can see it's more subtle than actually what you might think it would do when you apply it on there. But it just gives an overall regularity to the image and the slight differences in tonality, once again, kind of help to dirty up the image the way I wanted it. And you can see I've added the blackbird on one of the posts of the barbed wire fence. I thought that added a little balance, gave it a little bit of a storyline, I guess. And then finally, I added uh, edge work to it. My friend actually preferred the unedged version, so he got a print that's uh, basically what you see here. 
and the one that I like adds the watercolor edge and I did that by using a watercolor style dab with transparency and just painted along the edges of the image to get the broken up edge that I was going for. So that's basically how this image was created. The thing I found in the past year with my emergence brushes is that they work very good in going into a specific area of an image and applying it to give it the character that I'm going after. In this case, that plowed field appearance, and yet it's totally abstract. And in some of my other images, more areas of the image get treated like that. But in this case, just the one area of the image and the portion of the field was where it tended to work pretty good. So that's how this image was made. I hope uh, this gives you a little bit of information and might get you excited about emergence.